Osho State University Management Board give palliative to the community where the institution are located due to the extension of the lockdown for the next 14 days. The institution has six campus across the state which are located in Oshobo, Ikiwe, Ejibu, Ikmetui Jesha, Ifetedu and Okuku. The management has decided to distribute palliatives to the disabled and aged, both male and female across the town, in form of food items such as rice and most palliatives to enable them to survive during the period of the lockdown. In an interview with the Vice Chancellor of the institution, Professor Labo de Popola, said the decision of the management was taken in order to give back to the community who has hosted them since all these years. He also made it known that the money used for the program was derived from the allowance of all the staffs of the institution and he applied them for such decision at this crucial period. He also urged the people to obey the social distance protocol and stay at home because it is for the benefit of everybody in the state. This is the time to do it. You know, uh, a friend in need. It's a friend indeed. Now, things are quite tough, not only in Nigeria, globally. As a matter of fact, we should be thankful to God in this country that largely we still have the spirit of being our brother's keeper. So what we are doing now is because we know that there are some people who genuinely will not be able to sustain themselves in times like this. And we have people who are very old and who don't have other people caring for them. They live their lives from hand to mouth on a daily basis. They cannot go out. We have people who are special need people, blind people, dumb people, physically handicapped people. They need help. We have widows who don't have people caring for them. These are the ones we're targeting at this time. Uh, no amount is too much and no amount is too little. I mean, if you have the spirit of giving, no matter how little it is, you, you will. Uh, we have people who are billionaires who don't care how other people survive. And we have people who are managing to live, yet they care about people around them. Uh, you will be surprised, this is not fund directly from the university. It's funds contributed by members of management. Members of management uh, normally have some entitlements. Uh, part of it is spoiling allowance, communication allowance. We willingly decided that for April, we will sacrifice that. And this amounts to some neat sums of money. I mean, uh, who are the members of management? The vice chancellor, the deputy vice chancellor, the other principal officers, the registrar, the librarian, the bursar, the provost on our campuses, all the directors in the institutions, and deans. So these are people holding responsible positions in the university. And they are entitled to this running cost, running allowance. And they decided to forgo it for the month of people. That yes, let's share out of our own little with people who need it more than we do. Right? We have host communities. I have mentioned them. Those communities have their systems of administration. And the communities are headed by KBCs. We have confidence in these KBCs. They know their people, they know those who are vulnerable, and we know that God has given them the capacity to be truthful, to do justice, to anything. So we're taking this to the palace, we are believing that they will identify the truly needy people in their communities. The criteria are very clear. People who are widows, very old people who are in need, not all old people are in need. My mother died about two years ago. She died at 93. She was not in need because she had children who are taking care of uh, her. So you don't give things like this to old people who have children who are taking care of them. There are old people who don't have anybody taking care of them. We wish that the KBCs will identify this. We have old men and women who are infirm. By infirmity means that they cannot do anything on their own and they don't have help coming from anywhere. We are hoping that the KBC will recognize this ones and give the support to them. We have young people who are disabled, either unable to work, maybe blind, maybe dumb. These are people that we want to be targeted. And it isn't much. We have hundreds items and the items comprise 
rice, uh, semogita, beans, and gari in one pack. Each community will have 100 packs containing these four items, and we are targeting families, not necessarily individuals. So whatever is given has to be shared amongst families. It's not possible for government to feed everybody in the state. It's not possible for Mr. Buhari to feed everybody in Nigeria. But now everybody is blaming it on government. What should happen in a good society? Government will take the lead as it has done, and I believe sincerely they are doing the best they can. Then corporate organizations, okay, civil society group, well-to-do individuals, religious organizations, communities, should now follow suit, do their own. You can't put everything on the government. I want to give kudos to both the federal and state governments. They have really risen up to it. I know that there are problems downstream. The government will mean well, do the best it can, but you have some individuals there who will want to corner and render whatever effort government is giving, render it useless. But the government is trying. Now I want to call on corporate organizations, whether businesses or otherwise, to also do their bit. And I have seen that some organizations are doing it. Some people are donating billions. We believe it will get to the target. Uh, we have churches, we have mosques that are doing it. Individuals are doing it. We want them to keep this up. That's the way a good society evolves. It is a collective effort. And I want everybody to see it as so. Well. Yes, Junior Osho is doing its own. I want to believe that other institutions are also doing something similar. We didn't start with this. When the issue of COVID-19 first emerged, we did an awareness campaign. We brought in people from different communities in the state to know exactly what to expect from this pandemic. Next to that, we did additional enlightenment campaign. We did flyers in five major languages. English, Yoruba, Hausa, Igbo, and Pidgin language. Okay, then we also did uh, jingles that are on some radio stations just to create awareness. Because this pandemic can be tamed if we go by the precautions. In those jingles, in those flyers, stay at home. That is my view. People should stay at home. 14 days are not too long. Yeah, it's whoever stays and survives it that will tell the story. Yeah, yes. Then the online forecast model too. So every day we try to do a forecast of what to expect based on the attitude of people, based on what happened the previous night, and based on some other indicators. And those forecasts are actually uh, hitting the goal, goals hard. So yes, that's another contribution that we're doing. We want to play with them. You know, money has become a problem in this world. Everything is monetized. We won't be surprised if some people will decide to sell this off. We want to play with them. They should not sell. They should feed on this. It is meant for their well-being. They can give to others who are also in need that are not found. But they should not sell it. And they should also be kind to other people in their own little way. The attorney of Oshobo is Royal Majesty Obajimola Nepekula Rui. Appreciate the management of the institution for their kind gestures toward the people. Be grateful to them. Because at this time of our going in the state, especially in the part of Nigeria, many of our people who are locked in are not locked down. We will not afford eating before to talk of the period when those who are helping them could not go to work. So if this type of help come now, we have to be grateful to the source. So I appreciate them and I pray that they succeed with their undertaking. Thank uh, you, Mayor Shun Management, for the effort made so far. And I pray that they will not relent effort. At the same time, I would have to encourage other philanthropists who have been doing it that you just not get tired. Let them take out of the blessings given to them by God to help us during this trying period so that God will continue to bless them further. Well, as a traditional ruler, we have been trying as 
I mean, I have been trying my whole possible best at this end, and some others have been doing it. But the little we have could not go around our subjects. So I want the government to assist us further so that people will not be down for that. I don't know of any other place but you know, should go here. If you see them and you have those who are moving about, I will pass from the government. So I don't think anybody is moving about this time and you know, should go. They are complying strictly unless in darkness. Because I usually hear some movement late in the house. So I would like the government to assist us on this as well. And they should check the crossing border overnight by intruders and people who think they could bring, bring problems to us here. A message came to me yesterday that three people from Munisha had just newly arrived. I had to send a message to the government when I called and probably could not pick it that time. I generalized it that they should encourage our uh, security agents to be more hardworking at our borders, the land borders, so that these people will not be crossing down here for safety and bring a problem to us. So government should take care of this.